All right, everybody. Welcome back to Stories from a Mountain Town. This is your host, Tyler. Um, coming to you, as always, from Wilson, Wyoming. And today with me, I have my Taylor and I's landlady, neighbor, and <laughs> new friend, Kate Binger. Kate, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, awesome. Um, so Kate is, like I said, our landlady um, and lives right next door to us. She made the trek all 100 feet to our to my, to our door to get in it was it was daunting yeah and oh and we have her dog vita here uh, say hi vita yeah. <laughs> awesome yeah vita is what kind of dog is she i like to call her a mexican street dog mexican street dog yeah she's a hybrid of probably oh i don't know 90 different dogs mm -hmm. but when i did the dna test it came back um, Australian Coolie, which I had never heard of, mm -hmm. but that's where they get the, she gets the out turned paws. Oh, yeah. Um, a Brittany Springer Spaniel, which you can see uh, from her markings. Yeah. And of course, a long haired Chihuahua. Uh huh. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I call her the Mexican street dog. Yes, she definitely is that. And we'll get into that story eventually. But um, tell the nice people. Um, I guess what you do here for work, what uh, what do you do here for fun? Okay. Um, I'm an interior designer. Mm -hmm. I own Dwelling. We're a very small firm. Um, we do soup to nuts, new construction, remodels, uh, and then what I like to um, term as all the fluff work, which is artwork, soft fur furnishings, lighting, um, anything that is just a little bit of an easier change out than opening up walls and planning plumbing and, and uh, rough in of anything. So yeah, so it's just, uh, I mean, it's actually me, my assistant Lane, and then we have a handyman who works for us uh, almost mm, like half the week, mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Yeah. And I've had some interns here and there. And I, at one point I had three employees, but I decided that I just like keeping it smaller. That way I can focus more on the design work and mm -hmm. less on the management of people. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that people, a lot of people forget when they get into management or, you know, running a company is, um, you don't actually do the thing that got you there. You just manage people doing the thing that got you there. Correct. And so I've been here 14 years and dwelling has been open since 2010. That's so awesome. I, yeah, thank you. That's, it is awesome. Well, um, I, I just love, I think your whole setup, like, and, and even before you lived here, you lived just like down the road, right? Mm -hmm. Having your office there <laughs> and like having it be just with one little space. And mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't know how many employees you had, but I figured it was small mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like, it's kind of like the small business dream, right? <laughs> because you, you had like bike to work or walk to work or whatever. And like, even your, even like your farthest drive for a client, like can't be that far. The Valley isn't that big. I do actually put on an average of 16,000 miles a year on my car. Six. 16,000 16, a year 16,000 a year and I'm a quarter not I'm not even a quarter of a mile from my home to work yeah. so that's a lot of mileage yeah. driving around this valley mm -hmm. um that includes salt lake trips to salt lake for uh research but no, I do a ton of driving mm -hmm. because houses are all over the valley and you might go from Wilson to town or north of town mm -hmm. multiple times in a week. So by the time you add that up, it's quite a bit. But yeah. um, it's, you know, it's been working out really well for me. I used to have a store in town, which was a great experience. I always wanted to try retail and see what it would be like to have the retail and the design business. But ultimately, when you have retail and design working in the same space, you end up managing more of the retail than you do the design. And I found myself working. I mean, by the time I decided to close and move, I was on 90 hour work weeks on a regular basis. And Jeez. it was just 
absurd. I couldn't get anything done for my design projects during the day because people were coming in and talking to me Mm -hmm. either just to be social or to ask about products. And so if you're trying to tackle drawings for someone and then it's interrupted by a, a person coming in to shop or a person coming in to socialize, it becomes problematic to when you lose your flow. Yeah. No, yeah, I get that. When I'm editing videos in here, I shut the door. Like I tell Taylor, like I'm editing. I need like, I see like an hour of just like no interruptions because I, it's not, it's not super easy for me to get into the the flow of that sort of thing, the creativity part of it. Right. So I just need like no interruption for that. Right. You need to be able to hunker down and yeah. turn on your creativity and be uninterrupted. Yeah. So did you, w- w- what were you selling in that space? Just like the items that you so it was furniture lighting um then i had little items that were more gifty um i worked with a couple local jewelry designers Mm -hmm. candles throw pillows blankets Mm -hmm. any kind of gift accessory item housing housing good home goods Mm -hmm. kind of stuff Mm -hmm. cool yeah so it was i mean it was a great experience i'd always wanted to do it and give it a try but the other thing is retail is just (laughs) bonkers when you are trying to manage the people coming in the product and then for at least half of the year here no one's shopping because Mm -hmm. no one wants to go shop when it's 30 below everybody's on the mountain or in the mountains whereas you know, in the summer, people are shopping and walking around town, but it's just not a sustainable venture when you're selling larger items. And again, focusing on the design work just became too taxing. Yeah. And depending probably how, on how close you were to the square, like you're probably paying an arm and a leg for the rent or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Correct. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure your spot here isn't, isn't that cheap either, but. Well, they're not giving away rent yeah. anywhere yeah. in Jackson Hole, yeah. but this is more manageable out here. And my time is just more effective in the office. Yeah. So yeah, we have a, um, it's an office, small showroom. So, you know, we'll have clients come in and pick up an item here or there, mm-hmm. but, or a local person will come in and, and pop in and pick something up. Um, But for the most part, the goods we keep on hand are for installations and to show people materials, give them idea, rotate things around. And then um, it's rarely just someone off the street. Yeah, that's awesome. And and you feel that um, just like straight up having an office space is valuable for the kind of business you're trying to do? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that office space is just shy of 1100 square feet Mm -hmm. and i could easily have another 500 square feet just for our samples Mm. i mean we have piles of wood samples (laughs) and metal samples and um even though we have great tile uh, abilities at showrooms here to take clients to showrooms we still have tile samples on hand that might not be readily available um, at one of the local showrooms Mm -hmm. and then you tack on drawings and fabrics and catalogs it's a lot of just stuff I mean you have to have you have to have a, a certain amount in your library as a designer at your fingertips because going online to research everything does not allow you to have the correct color to work from in real time. Mm -hmm. So whether that's the finish of a metal or a lampshade or a throw pillow, it it's all relevant to the space. Yeah. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like kind of the, the reason somebody is using an interior designer is to, uh, it's the it's the service of you your eye first and foremost your ability to figure out what looks good based on like the style that they want first but is it also like the service of your researching constantly finding cool pieces that fit into these themes that you want to use and then bringing them together 
for the for the customer correct that's all correct um it really depends on the scope of the work of the project mm. but i always tell everyone that when you are starting a project uh construction new construction or remodel bringing on an entire team to work together right from the get-go is really important because when you bring in a designer to work with the architect and the builder from the beginning, although the architect may line out the lighting plan, the lighting plan that the architect has in mind might not include all of the decorative lighting that Mm. you want to see throughout your home. Also specifically, you may end up liking to read in a certain way that the architect isn't necessarily as focused on as they might be on another area of the house. And the intimacy of getting to know a designer and the way you live in your home is that a designer's resources for something that is decorative but also that functions well just enhances what an architect is planning from the beginning. So it's it's really a fluid movement of mm. creativity and resources to be able to pull someone's knowledge and have their knowledge be able to share with the client so that you can say, well, I didn't really expect a like pendants in this area or um, multiple fixtures in my living room. But when a designer puts them together and has options for you to look at and knows how they interplay, then all of a sudden your ceiling gets a lot more interesting when it's layered. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a cool skill that you have. So you're not just the, you're not, you're not just the designer who says like, you know, here's some thousand dollar throw pillars pillows that look nice and then here's like a an elk skull for five thousand dollars that'll go above your mantle you're like in the build process too (laughs) no definitely not no i'm not and it it really chafes me (laughs) when people call me a decorator oh no And nothing, there's nothing wrong with being a decorator. It's totally fine, but it's a separate <laughs> job. And when you go to school and you study the rough in of electrical and plumbing mm-hmm. and you know what it means to put in headers and go into crawl spaces and figure out how to run wires, like especially in a remodel mm-hmm. when things get funky and you have to plan around load bearing walls um or you know a a crawl space that doesn't have access to move plumbing somewhere like say it's slab on grade which means that you're sitting on concrete and so you might have this brilliant idea to move your bathroom from one end of the room to another end of the room but what that means is you are chewing up concrete on a slab on grade construction Mm -hmm. to then re-rough in the plumbing to move it in the flooring to from one end of the room to the other versus Mm -hmm. when you have a crawl space it's easily done right Mm -hmm. so I do not care for when people, you know, say something like, well, you just throw pillows, which has become a joke because of a friend of mine. And nothing, there's nothing wrong with the soft goods. I love doing the soft goods yeah. and artwork and, and just the pretty stuff, right? I call it the fluff work. Mm-hmm. But it's just different than getting into the construction world. And yeah. um, it takes a, a lot of study. So... I just like (laughs) making that separation because I wasn't a very good student growing up (laughs) until I got to design school. Yeah. And then I got a four point and it was like, okay, I'm here. I have a job. I'm in grad school. I really give a shit about this. I want to make this work for me. I want to study it. Mm -hmm. And I studied hard. And so I like to remind myself. (laughs) yeah <laughs> that i got here for a reason yeah i think that's that's you definitely your company's differentiator that you're not just putting pillows on a couch for thousands of dollars you're like 
in the nitty gritty of like the build. Also, there's no throw pillow that should cost <laughs> thousands of dollars. <laughs> I know. Well, I just like I, I uh, you, you know we used to live um, at uh, we used to rent from John Martin, oh, so yes. we were on two interior designers in <laughs> yeah. Jackson, and we we looked we just were we always make jokes about like oh they probably charged like these clients like thousands of dollars for pillows because like they'll just, people here will just pay that right. <laughs> but that's where our joke about that came about. <laughs> nice but i like i like what you said about once you got into what you once you figured out what you wanted to do you got like way better grades because that was the same with me like oh really in college yeah once i got to marketing i was i have a marketing and management degree Mm -hmm. at the same semester i'd be acing all my business classes and like c's and maybe a d in like you know prerequisite english or something like that Mm. because it's just like you know my brain would only give a shit on the stuff that i like enjoyed and saw a future and i'm like i don't need to like what is this writing a response to a response to an article like what is this bullshit yeah let me go like market something how about a straight up d minus in <laughs> mr escudero's uh mr escudero <laughs> chemistry class oh junior no you're high school that's not good he made me cry <laughs> he did where did you grow up ohio cincinnati cincinnati mm-hmm. are you at all like a Bengals fan or anything or i'm a football not fan? no i don't i don't care for football at all <laughs> what are there any sports that you do like yeah skiing i well i love to ski yeah uh i love tennis do you i love going to soccer games um i love basketball i just am not i If I'm going to watch professional sports, I want to do it in person, Mm -hmm. but football is not something I'm ever going to attend or watch on TV. But if you said, Kate, let's go to a basketball game, Mm -hmm. I would be all over that. I would be all over a hockey game. I went to the Masters. Yeah. Do you 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 go to the Moose games a lot? Uh, Not a lot, but I, I go occasionally. Yeah. We always go like, or like last winter, we went like the first three weekends, probably to one of them. And then it was like, oh, it's like the same thing every weekend. And Taylor and I being from Minnesota, she played hockey growing up. My siblings did. Right. We've seen some hockey. Sure. So like, I don't, it's not like a exciting thing for us anymore. <laughs> it's not mind bending for yeah. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like our friends, you know, one of our friends is from uh, Rhode Island. He played hockey growing up, but he hasn't seen it in a while mm-hmm. since then. Another friend from Philly. And... um so they didn't really grow up with hockey. So they're like, oh, this is so cool. They're like, you know, skating and fighting and all this nice. stuff. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. This is like my thousandth, <laughs> thousandth game I've seen. Right. But those are, they're fun with the band and all the breweries there. Absolutely. And the whole town, like in the beginning of the their season, there's not, I don't think it's, they start in like November, I think. Right. I so, think so the the skiing isn't like full on yet. No. So it's like everyone brings their kids there. Um, you met Haley with the German Shepherd. She's right. a, She's a teacher. So she goes there and she sees all her students there. And that's pretty funny because like we'll have a couple beers and go. Sure. And then she's got to just like go straight face and be like, hey, guys, you guys doing your homework? Right. She yeah. just shows up in a ho- hockey mask. Yeah. Nice. She's actually the mascot. So she can. Perfect. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good for her. Um, but yeah. Um, cool. So I, li- I mean, I do like I love all sports. Yeah. I think, except for football. <laughs> That's funny. I played in co- I played football in college. Oh, you did. So I'm like a major football fan. Mm. So in the fall, if they, I don't even know if they're gonna play, but if they play, you'll hear some yelling about that. Gosh, the- yeah, F- like professional sports. How bizarre is that gonna be this fall? Yeah, I mean, all of them. Like, I mean, the NBA is now playing in the in a bubble. the The PGA is playing with no fans baseball they keep having teams drop out but they're playing with no fans it's so weird how the different strategies they've taken to appease people it just can't be that exciting to play without the fans there i mean the fans really add in so much zest yeah i know they've, they've been they've been piping in fan or crowd noise to all the stadiums just to give it a little bit of a feel so you can't I mean, probably so you can't hear all the players like cursing the whole time. Right. Um, but yeah, the NBA, they're playing in like just a gym that'd be like, you, you could find the gym at like your own normal uh, fitness club or something mm-hmm. like just a small gym and they have like screens up on the outsides of it and they'll like play videos of fans basically like they make it look like they're in stands, but it's just a little like a headshot of, of a fan. Right. And then all the ads go through it. So they're like trying to give some sort of atmosphere, but they're not, they don't have anything. 
It's the camaraderie. Yeah. Which is actually tied back into my business because there's so much camaraderie Uh in my business when you get to know the client and their life and it becomes such an interpersonal relationship. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the subs and the architects and the builders. And it's just, it's crucial. I think it's a, a real deficit I've been feeling during COVID not having that connection with people. Um, even if you're an introvert, I know like introverts are probably faring better <laughs> through all of this mm-hmm. than uh, than extroverts, obviously. Yeah. But still, I, I think like whether it's professional sports or in your workplace, it it really makes a difference when you have that level of camaraderie with with your people yeah. who you see on a regular basis. Yeah, and you're hands-on in the space that they're going to be in. Sometimes it's a second home for them, vacation home, but maybe it's their all the time home and that's your your hand you're doing you're you're building or or putting together the space that they're going to be in 24/7 basically. Right. And especially now, they're people are in their just in their homes more than ever. Exactly. So that's got to be you got to like know the type of person like if you're going to design something for me, like you'd probably want to throw something with like wolves in there. And that'd be like <laughs> you knowing what <laughs> just stuff this about magnificent me magnificent beast yeah yeah like a cool picture bridger like oh grab that grab that um picture right there oh nice so this was a photo that i took i need to get it framed uh-huh. a photo i took and then taylor's sister found this like website where they take it and they watercolor it or right. like somehow they print it to look like watercolor sure look at those handsome boys yeah where is this um the actual photo is not what the background is the background is just like what the the artist put on there ah i see the actual photo was um you know the trailhead that you would take to like crystal butte hike and crystal light sure right above the refuge Mm -hmm. right up there like a short little trail you can go right up a little hill sweet right above town that's where it was such good boys Mm -hmm. big ears enormous ears bridger Bridges had the same size ears since he was like eight months old. <laughs> Seriously, maybe. Oh, I, can I would have fallen apart and just completely melted if I saw him at eight weeks old. I'll find. I'll find something. This is a That's... Fun, fun part of the podcast for those that are just listening. We're just gonna look at <laughs> pictures on my computer. <laughs> but what's amazing is that Bridger's ears are one of Bridger's ears is just oh stop it. That's day one oh. of that's the first day I got him. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> He's like as big as Vita. Right oh there. my goodness. Look at those paws. Yeah. Um this is his first big snow. Oh. It's just so fun having a puppy. <laughs> he was such a little rascal when I he was a puppy. Was he? Yeah. He would. What ro- was the worst he did? Um, He chewed through a mattress. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, a doozy. He used to get like separation anxiety. Mm-hmm. And and not, not until we started living here did we ever leave them um, out when we would leave. Sure. We'd have them in kennels for a while because if he used to chew stuff up. But yeah, he chewed a hole through my mattress once. Wow. Right, big boy? Tenacious. Yeah, he doesn't. He's saying, no, that wasn't me. I got to get <laughs> out of here. Um, that was So that was definitely the worst. And then he dug some holes and stuff. This is his mom. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. Yeah. That was when he was starting to look like a man. Right. It's actually like, he's what fill- is that? Three years ago almost. He's filling out. Yeah. Yeah, he got... Since he's part wolf, I think he, I think they mature quicker. Like physically, they just like mature faster. What is so fascinating about him is he's incredibly fierce with his eyes Mm -hmm. and his stance, but he's just such a love bug. He is. It's just like he got, I I always say he got the best parts of all the breeds that he's, that he He is. He sure did. This is a good one of him. Mm -hmm. Where can I zoom in on that? That's a great sky, too. Yeah. So that's the city that I got him in, St. Paul. And there's this, like, old railway, railroad mm-hmm. switching area that they turned into a park. Um, that's where I take him, like, every day. Nice. Um, yeah, he, like, he got, like, the wolf eyes and the wolf face. So he has a very serious face. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's pretty aloof because of the wolfy part. Like, he's nice to people and he lets them pet him, but he just doesn't really care. Right. Where, like, a lot of, like golden retrievers are the extreme where they're like need to be pet sure 
and um and then he just looks serious all the time even when he's a puppy the vets called him a serious boy mm. right buddy interesting yeah you're very serious hello Hi. he um he sit? Sit. has a mild take on his eyeliner vita i <laughs> say has eyeliner perfection oh, she yeah. really goes in deep you sit she likes to sit? You know, she really likes to get that kind of oh, rock yeah. and roll star. Yeah, she has like up into her eyebrows. A yeah, bit. she gets she gets a little bit of the cat eye going. Mm-hmm. Could you? Why, why don't we go into uh, Vita's story? Oh, Vita's story. Okay, Vita has been here for with me for seven and a half years. Um, so I was in Tracones, Mexico, for a yoga retreat. And where is that? I don't know that city. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> it's down near Zehuatanejo, which is a great Shawshank Redemption. Uh, oh yeah. Yep. I don't. I don't still don't know where that is, but okay, I so, remember that from the movie. Yeah. So little Shawshank Redemption reference. Look at that guy. So That's... down. Um. What did it? What does he say in Shawshank? Where the Pacific meets. Where the Pacific meets the, oh, shoot, I'll What's come this? up with it later. What is the city? Uh, Traconis, T-R-O-N-O-K, no, C-A-N. Tracon. Traconis. It's, yeah, there we go. T-R-O-C-O-N-E-S. Yeah, so we're Googling this right now. So it is. Is that the city, Zewatanejo? So Zewatanejo is yeah. where you fly in. This is really, really down there. Oh yeah, it's it's. Uh, and it's like not it's so it's it's like it's on the Pacific side. Um, it's it's right on the edge. Just just of, like yeah, west of Mexico City, basically. Mm-hmm. South of Guadalajara. That's like not a very common vacation spot. I don't think. No, so there was this great little um, yoga retreat that I found, which when I was calling around for yoga retreats and I found this one after I had called more than a handful and they were like, yeah, we're vegan and we don't serve alcohol. And I kept saying, I'm not going on vacation to not drink alcohol. Like I cannot drink alcohol at home. <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to go somewhere to abstain from alcohol. So um, anyway, when I called this place, which was probably about the seventh or eighth place I called, uh, I quickly said, so do you have alcohol? And they said, we have uh, 27 different kinds of tequila. And I said, this is going to be perfect for me. (laughs) (laughs) And anyway, so I was down there with two girlfriends and it was the first day and there were just stray dogs rampant through the area. And the, um, the yoga retreat was one of the first businesses that was rebuilding the area from the cartel coming through and decimating the neighborhood. And so anyway, Vita had been hanging out at the Palapa where we were doing yoga and, you know, getting scraps from people, staying cool in the shade. And she came over to me literally while I was in Downward Dog (laughs) and kissed me on the nose. And I stood up and I looked at my friend and I was like, holy shit, I think I've got to take this dog home with me. (laughs) So I started inquiring through the retreat with all of the local people what they thought and what they knew of her. And they said she's been coming here for a while and she lives with this family who beats the shit out of her. And I she was in a bad way. I mean, she's 16 pounds now and she was probably close to 10 when I got comfortable. Right. But there's yeah. definitely a, there's definitely a stereotype, and uh, and I would just say hotness is probably the the biggest yeah stere- biggest portion of the stereotype. Yeah, I always focus on more on the activities that they all do, uh, less on less than the uh, economic oh, status. Interesting, because there's like f- let's see, I'll name them. There's like four things that 
everybody on this side of the river, do, all the women on this side of the river do. Oh, let's hear it. So one of this is one of your tendencies also. It's those trucker hats. Oh. They all wear the <laughs> trucker hats, and I don't get why. <laughs> and it, I think it's a big like hiking, touring cap that that only chicks wear. Way more chicks wear them. It's like the foam one, like foam foam front, yep. mesh back, high mm-hmm. point, mm-hmm. like you know, weighs as much as air. Yeah. Those ones. <laughs> So I think that's one. <laughs> that's a Wilson mom. Thing. I would like to put in that I have been wearing baseball hats, mm, like some version of a baseball hat, whether it's a trucker hat or a, or like a classic baseball hat. Mm. Definitely since I was <laughs> thir- like 12, 13. Hats have always been a solid part of my repertoire. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not the, the other hat. No, it's the I get trucker it. hats. I get it. Just the truck. And it's All like, right, they're so from the bird or they're from like the stagecoach or like Wilson Backcountry or it says like, uh, what do they have? They have uh, Wilson Low Life, uh-huh. like that kind of stuff. Okay. So trucker hats. <laughs> yeah. Trucker yeah. hats, yoga, another one of your tendencies. <laughs> um, I do do a lot of yoga. Uh, Definitely good looking in what, um, in my in what I always picture as a Wilson mom, and uh, like a pretty a pretty big fan of Chardonnay. <laughs> I definitely do not pair up with Chardonnay. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So, but I yeah, I, that when when I call Taylor uh, a Wilson mom is when she's like drinking like early Chardonnays. <laughs> okay that's what i i mean i kind of think i don't even watch the show but I've, do you ever watch uh schitt's creek i did i tried it out for a little bit it it i i mean i enjoyed it it was comical for sure yeah. but then it just grated on me a little bit yeah so if the mom moira if she did yoga and hiked <laughs> she's a wilson mom <laughs> that's what i picture moira would never hike yeah, but it like, but there's people here who are like they have money, but they also enjoy hiking. Right. Like they'll do it. Like they'll hike with the country club group. Well, just because you just because you have money doesn't mean you don't like to hike. I know, I know that. <laughs> but I'm saying that's like part of the part of the uh, demographic of Wilson mom. Um, and then they have, and then I think a lot of times they have kids named like Bridger or like Jackson. Mm. Like the amount of people around the the. The times you hear the word Bridger here, it's people either calling their kids or their dogs. <laughs> so they will be at like a park or like walking through somewhere and everyone's like, Bridger, Bridger. <laughs> and it's like this five-year-old runs up, which is cool because I'd probably name my kid something around the valley too. Right, right. Well, it's a good nod to to yeah. our space. Yeah, to Jim Bridger. Do you know much about Jim Bridger? You know, I was actually looking at your book and I was thinking that I need to um, read about him because I don't know. I don't know. Any, take that one. Really anything about I will take yeah. this. Thank you. It's uh, um, I, this is coffee. Oh, this, here, is, so. uh, this is way back when. So this. Yeah. So this book, we were driving out here to move here Ooh, in a gas. 1824. Yeah. So that Damn. book is a combination of the author's. Um, kind of uh, giving some background info on the, on the, the mm. situation that they're into, and then Jim's actual journal. Oh, okay. So, like, you get to hear the words of Jim Bridger, and it goes from, like, like him as a kid, how he got into coming out here. Because okay. he grew up in, like, St. Louis or something, and then, like, mm. you know, he couldn't read. He was, like, a freaking blacksmith apprentice and said he wanted to go somewhere else. So he hopped on a riverboat and went up to Missouri and then made his way out in this area. But he basically mapped or mapped or discovered everything in like the western Dakota side of the Dakotas, Wyoming, Montana. He was the first European to to discover the Salt Lake, Great Salt Lake, um, like in Idaho, like this whole place. And there's a lot of the story, a lot of what he talks about takes place here, Teton Valley, Idaho, and then kind of like by uh, Rock Springs area. Okay. They have a. They used to have a fort there called Fort Bridger, where okay. he lived. Where he spent a lot of time. Yeah. But 
Yeah, he's a super cool guy. I'm going to come back to get this from you because what Kate is not doing a lot of these days is <laughs> pleasure reading because <laughs> she's been doing nothing but working. But I am going to reserve the right to come back for okay. that when I'm ready to sit and pleasure read. Yeah, definitely. Any I of these, any of those I'm books. I'm going to have a, a vacation of just pleasure reading. Like, yeah three days where I don't have my phone on and I don't have to work at all and I can just do yoga <laughs> <laughs> and pleasure read. <laughs> What's your, um, uh, I always see you doing yoga on your deck. Yes. Do you have like a certain set of, what do they call them? Poses? Yeah. I do some yoga, but I don't, I'm not like into it. So I, this actually comes back to my leg and my back. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say my yoga practice is a combination of years of physical therapy and what I learned in physical therapy and then uh, mixing that with yoga classes and, and different styles and poses in yoga that have worked well for me. So mm -hmm. it's an amalgamation of, I mean, we're going on... 16 years of shit yeah. in my body and a lot of money I've paid for help with it. Mm -hmm. So I do, I, yeah, I lean, I lean on it a lot to keep me um, off painkillers mm -hmm. and it works well. Yeah. I started getting into it. Um, so I tore my ACL in college in mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after I was, you know, fully re re recovered or whatever, I still didn't have as much mobility and like flexion in my knee that I wanted. I didn't feel comfortable like, you know, golfing to like squat to read a putt or just like, you know, squatting to like do something around the house. Right. I still felt tension in there. And so I started doing pretty regularly, just doing um, child's pose sure. and just kind of sitting on my legs like that. Yeah. Even not even at the beginning, it wasn't like bent down. It was just like getting that flexion to be fully flexed and like feeling that pressure in there and making it feel okay. But then I kept doing it. And then like, after a while and now i from doing stuff like that regularly and doing other poses i uh i basically have feel no difference between my two knees even though one had acl surgery and has like a has a hamstring tendon as an acl now don't you love that yeah when you can fix yourself yeah it's and it's really not good feeling like i don't i mean i used to follow this this trick on youtube and i do like 20 or 30 minute sessions but now since i know the poses mm -hmm. I have like this 10 minute little flow that's kind of like downward dog child's kind of a bunch of twisting, you know, back stuff because my lower back gets sore from right. sitting here all day. Sure. Um, but I just found like, like you said, I just found like a, a little flow that I, that hits my problem areas and it's quick and it's, it's, I really, really enjoy it. Yeah. I think that's great for everyone to just figure out a space and what works for their body at yeah. home. And then if you are into classes, going to a class to try something different. But, um, I mean, it's also just a good way to de-stress mm -hmm. and keep yourself calm. Makes me take a minute to breathe and not think about other things. And I love the meditative practice of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, sometimes I like to do it with tequila at the end of the day. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. We have a great spot to sit on your deck with yeah. the sun setting like like you are like you guys are always doing. Yeah. Is it such a great spot for that? Like it's peaceful. It is. It's, it's not. The road's sanctuary. a little noisy, but. The road is a little noisy. It's not ideal, but I feel super lucky to be here. And yeah, it's a it's a little sanctuary back there. It, it is really good. Yeah. I sit. I'll sit on my deck, too. And just like. You know, the air is just not moving. It's just so the birds are chirping. Yeah. I love and it when Tony. The birds have yeah. been out. Oh, and Tony's Tony playing, playing his, his guitar. I love that. Guitar, I know. He's just always kind of just strumming and it's never too loud, but it's just like off in the distance, just like this. Oh, I'll this tell piece. him that. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know what he's playing, but it's just so peaceful. He's it's been just... working on um, Braun Your Stop or Braun Your Stop from Led Zeppelin. Oh, Wait. I don't know that song. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no. Oh. You play it? <laughs> We can, except you gotta my go? steaks are ready. Okay, let's yeah, wrap this up then. So um, I'm sorry, we have. It's to all good. No, we've been doing this for over an hour, so that's good. We did good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to wrap it up, uh, tell the nice people um, where to find dwelling. Okay. 
Um, dwelling is at Osprey Landing on the Village Road, which is 1921 Moose Wilson Road, Suite mm-hmm. 102. You'll see the big dwelling van up front. Correct. I have a big Sprinter van that has the logo on the side. It's not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> we use it regularly, yeah. even though people want to purchase it on yeah. a regular basis. <laughs> it gets used regularly, people. It's a badass um, fan. It has like big tires and stuff. Yeah, I didn't take the snow tires off because I was like, why would I take the snow tires off? These are awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's going to snow in like five minutes anyways. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, and so, and then yes, what's your website and, that, and oh, social? Uh, dwellingjh.com. Mm-hmm. And my Instagram is dwellingjh. I'm pretty sure. It is, yeah. <laughs> and Facebook is Dwelling Jackson Hole. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's always posting. I mean, it's, it's kind of your personal page, too. So you're posting personal stuff a little bit. And then, but a lot of um, your projects that you work on, like the little. Uh, the little um the little decorative pieces that you add to a home you're always posting like oh look at this cool little you know thing from morocco or whatever i, lo- I love those because right. like we've talked about right. i love morocco i love we, morocco because we both went to morocco yeah and it was a great experience yeah and um i feel like i wouldn't be doing um my job as as uh co-ceo of my marketing company if i didn't say Kate, if you ever need marketing help, Marilton Media Marketing is here for you. Thank you. We can help you with Tyler, thank so- you. social media management, um, Google ads, web design. Mm. Um, what else do we do? Kind of just anything. This is good to know. Anything digital marketing. Great. Yeah. Your thank photos, you. videos, like any of that. If you just yeah. need like photos one day at a site. Perfect. Love it. And that's my hard sell for the okay. day. <laughs> so yeah. Um, if you are in the area, how far will you venture to, to meet a customer? Well, I've, I've flown to Richmond, Virginia. To, okay. <laughs> to do so if you're anywhere <laughs> in America and you yeah, want some really cool design, the United States. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you want some really cool design that gets past just the decorative part of it, hit Kate up, find the website, hit me up and I'll tell her and, uh, we'll get it going. Um, Kate, thank you for coming on. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. This was a pleasure. Yeah. Podcasts are fun, right? Totally. Everyone gets so like stressed about the fact that your voice will be heard. And even you like asked what the questions were. I'm like, I don't know. I just didn't <laughs> want it to be like sometimes when they do an ed- editorial. Yeah. It's such pinpointed questions that mm-hmm. I really want to have time to digest how I'm going to respond in terms of the process of design and because i'm going to be honest a lot of times they chop up what you say and then if you haven't thought through it it you sound a little bit like a junk show <laughs> so i didn't want that to happen but yeah. this is i'm i'm good with this i'll yeah. come back i'll be yeah. a repeat definitely. podcaster yeah awesome you can definitely yeah. do that yeah um yeah this is people don't want to hear me robotically ask you questions about design because I don't know anything about design. Right. But and they also don't want to hear you robotically answer questions no. about design. And I'm not here to like get you, I'm not here to get a headline. I'm going to post this entire file as is with my theme song in the front and the back and that's it. You might be the next Joe Rogan. Ooh. I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I cuz this model I I, I love took Joe Rogan. I do too. Uh, but I took the model from him, but it's just kind of like it'd be kind of like jinxing like like you don't say oh. you don't say like this guy's going to pitch a no hitter mm. when he's pitching a no hitter right not that i'm well, doing he's that well an but inspiration yeah and it's good to have an inspiration and we love you joe yeah um have you seen his ufo podcast yes <laughs> should yes. we should we should i should i come back and we can get into the yeah. ufo conversation we definitely Ooh, that can could be our next one please yes. i'd love that i haven't gotten We're gonna to have like to get tony over here he yes. goes deep yes i it's why aren't we talking about this the <laughs> pentagon said no i have there's... to go have steaks i have to go okay have steaks. okay we're gonna have to get we gotta this. shut it down this is we'll, next time yeah this is next, next podcast time. we'll talk about aliens with yeah. tony and kate yeah. um kate thank you for coming on everybody yeah. um lately i've been giving a little like tip on how to stay busy during covid um it's often reading books so everyone read a book take your dog on a hike go rescue a dog um and have a good week everyone thank you have some yoga Do some yoga, stretch out. Yeah.
Thanks.